in this class we will discuss about uh, how a beam column fails or the modes of failure of beam columns and how the effect of tenderness ratio and the magnitude of axial load govern the uh, failure criteria in a beam column this is a clear question of course this is a very class for your video question paper july 2022 so there are five different cases of modes of failure in beam columns so as you know beam columns they fail by compression criteria or by bending criteria or by both so here uh, the effect of tenderness ratio that is lambda and axial force that is p which is acting on the beam column on modes of failure of beam columns so the first case so in the earlier lecture I have given one uh, graph uh, that is uh, moment rotation graph or force uh, deflection graph I have explained. So different types of failures I have explained in one of the uh, video lectures which I have loaded earlier. So that means uh, the behavior of uh, behavior of beam columns I have explained. So in this uh, lecture I am going to explain the, the five different cases. So any uh, type it may fail. So normally you will be having two types of columns. One is short column, another one is slender column or long column. So depending on the value of uh, the slenderness ratio, you can uh, distinguish between short column and long column. So you can see uh, the maximum values of slenderness ratio lambda uh, given in IS 800 page 20 table 3 for different types of members for tension members, for compression members, for combined uh, effect of uh, tension and bending, compression and bending like that. So you can have uh, values, those maximum values of lambda from the table given in page 20 of the code. Now depending on that, let us see how a beam column normally fails. What are the general types of values of uh, beam columns? Because whenever you are designing uh, any, any component of a structure, so whether it is a beam or a column or a slab or a beam column, so you should be in a position to identify the uh, types of uh, modes of failure. So whether we have to, whether the member fails by uh, compression or by bending or by tension, so like that, or by buckling like that. So now we will see what are the different cases of failures of uh, beam columns. The first case is a short column subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending about either of the axis. Either of the axis means whether it can be z axis or y axis. You can see here. So this is a section of a beam column, let us say I section. So z z axis is the major axis as you know because um, the value of moment of inertia and uh, plastic section modulus or elastic section modulus will be higher uh, along the z z axis compared to y y axis. So here uh, depending on the load, so here axial load is acting and it is subjected to uniaxial bending also. That means uniaxial bending means it can be uh, having a moment in one direction or it can be biaxial uh, bending means it can have significant moments about both the axes that is my and mz both may be there it, then it is uh, biaxial bending if only mz is there then it is uh, uniaxial bending and p value will be there of course as the axial load in such a case in such a case this is a short column this total is short column in the case of short columns uh, this lambda is less so lambda is nothing but the standard ratio is equal to the ratio of effective length to the effective length of the column k l to the mean uh, that is radius of gyration so if you want uh, lambda to be maximum this radius of gyration you have to take minimum r value you have to take minimum where r minimum is root of i minimum by a once again about which axis uh, the moment of inertia is minimum for that particular section that value you have to take and divide it by the uh, area area cross section area of the section and take the square root of that you will get the r minimum value then if you take this ratio you will get the lambda maximum value in such a case how the beam column fails is the failure occurs when the plastic capacity mp of the section is reached so this is very important so we have understood in plastic analysis that uh, uh, particularly steel uh, it can take uh, load till the stage uh, till the uh, maximum uh, moment is reached that is plastic capacity is reached mp value is reached 
so that you have understood in the plastic analysis so once uh, the moment carrying capacity of that particular section uh, or for that particular different end conditions and the length uh, it reaches it reaches the mp value at that time the failure occurs in the case of a short column subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending or axial load and biaxial bending so that is the first criteria of you know, of course it, it is only for short columns but normally in, in practice uh, in steel structures mainly we have slender columns uh, where the stiffness ratio is very high so case 2 in case 2 It is a slender column. So slender column means the lambda value is very high, subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending. Same type, same type. About the major axis. So here only uniaxial bending we have to take. So and it is uh, bending takes place about the major axis Z Z. So in this case there are two uh, subdivisions. So one is see here. If the column is supported laterally, so that means if it is laterally supported or laterally restrained, so you know the meaning of the laterally restrained. So if the compression flange of the column is restrained, then it is called as uh, laterally restrained. So again, if it is laterally supported uh, or restrained, again buckling about minor axis. So buckling about minor axis is avoided. Restrained means buckling about minor axis is not there. Column fails by buckling about z z axis. So if it is laterally restrained about y y axis, definitely it will fail by uh, buckling uh, by z z axis. At low axial loads, a plastic hinge may form at the end of at the end or at the point of maximum moment. So there is another case. Suppose if the axial load is uh, less, comparatively less. Uh, So there may be a possibility of development of plastic hinge at the end of the uh, member or at the point where the moment is maximum. So you know the concept of plastic hinge. So at a section, uh, any member, if the moment reaches the value of MP at that uh, point, uh, at that section, a plastic uh, hinge will form. That we have understood in the case of uh, plastic analysis. So that is the criteria in the case of a slender column subjected to axial load and Uniaxial bending about z z axis or major axis. So the column, the beam column, will fail like this. That, that is the thing you have to keep it in mind. Now in the same thing, case two, if you go to uh, let us say case four, see the difference between case two and case four. So case four is a slender column subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending about the major axis z z. About the major axis Z, Z. so the type the case is same, but the condition here is different. So here the column is supported laterally, but here the column has no lateral support. So see here. So if the uh, compression flange, uh, if the compression right here, if the compression flange is not supported laterally, please see here. That is the main difference here. Column is supported laterally here in case two. In case four, column is not supported laterally above the minor axis y y. Then how it fails? It fails due to combination of column buckling above y y axis and lateral torsion buckling also. So in this case, the failure will be due to both of these things. So one is buckling above minor axis. Another one is lateral torsion buckling. That which includes you have you have learnt about lateral torsion buckling, twisting effect also will be there, and lateral deflection effect also will be there in the case of lateral torsion buckling. So this concept we have understood that uh, we have discussed in the design of laterally unrestrained beams. Okay, so see the difference here. So this is the main the main difference. Supported laterally, it fails. Uh, but about buckling about z z axis, if it is not supported laterally, it will fail about the uh, buckling about z z axis or the weaker axis, and also lateral torsion buckling. So two and four see the difference. Next, coming to case three, once again slender column subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending about the minor axis. See, this is about major axis. This is about minor axis. Why why is the minor axis? So in this case, if the column is laterally unsupported, once again, 
the laterally unsupported means the compression flange of the column is not restrained. Unsupported and no buckling out of the plane of bending, column fails by buckling about y y axis. So it fails by buckling about y y y axis and also at very low axial loads, it will reach the bending capacity about y y axis. So if the axial load is uh, less, not very high axial load, then the what happens that section will reach the bending capacity means that MP value about the yy axis first that is the meaning so here uh, one thing you should keep it in mind first thing is um, this uh, major axis minor axis then about buckling concept then about the lower or higher values of axial loads because here we are dealing with two factors one is tenderness ratio another one is axial load what are the effects of tenderness ratio and axial load on the modes of failure of a beam column so two parameters are there here one is axial load p another is lambda center ratio. Next the last case is it is also a center column subjected to axial load and biaxial bending. So where uh, you will be having uh, all the three that is P will be there, M1 will be there, Mz will be there. So biaxial bending. In that case if the column has no lateral support once again it is laterally unrestrained failure is the same as case 4. So same as case 4 means it can fail by the combination of column buckling about y axis and also lateral torsional buckling which includes twisting and deflection. Minor axis buckling has the greatest greater effect in this case. So minor axis uh, uh, buckling will take place, it will be having the greater that means it fails by minor axis buckling. So that is the meaning. So normally this is termed as the general loading case. General loading case. Now uh, in general, what you can summarize here is, you can summarize in two points. One is, if the axial loads are small, if the axial loads, the p-values are small, and if the members are short members, if they are short beam columns, then the formation of plastic hinges, that is the attainment of MP value at different uh, sections of the beam column, it leads to failure. That is the one point. Another point is, if the axial loads are more or large axial loads and slenderness and members are slender, that means lambda value is high. If short member, lambda value is less. So if the members are slender, the lambda value is high, then the failure may be buckling about the weaker axis or it can be due to lateral torsional buckling. That means in any one of uh, uh, these uh, types of failures uh, you can expect. So one is the first one is. Uh, by the formation of plastic hinges, failure may occur. So, second case is it may fail about the weaker axis, that is y y axis. Uh, third case is uh, it, can, it may fail by lateral torsional buckling. And fourth case is combination of uh, uh, both this uh, buckling as well as uh, uh, lateral torsional buckling. So, these are the different um, uh, modes of uh, failures of a beam column. Depending on the values of the axial load and slenderness ratio, so we can divide, we can classify the modes of failures into five different cases. Of course, whatever graph I have explained in the earlier uh, video, so that also you can refer for this because it is an important question in the examination. So they will ask you to explain the effect of slenderness ratio and axial force on modes of failure of beam columns. So this is an important question. So that graph also you have to draw along with this. In that graph I have shown uh, the different uh, types of values of beam columns that M theta graph or P delta graph you can refer that.